Okay, so let's see how I do this background with pan pastels. You can see I've got a selection of blues and very light colours there. I've got a white in there as well. It's a bit of a, a turquoise. Let's move them across so, so you can see them a bit better. And just regular printer paper. The soft tool. They call them a knife. Knives. I'm just trying that colour out. Yep. I've already tested this a bit just to make sure I like it. I wanted the blue as I mentioned earlier on because it's pretty directly opposite the oranges we're seeing on the zebra on the color wheel. So as I, I bring this around the zebra you'll notice that the oranges and that are starting to look more vibrant. Now you can do this flat if you want. You see I use small circular type of strokes to cover the underlayer or to cover the, the paper. You need to put enough pan pastel on there to get your effect. Now I don't want it to be a perfectly flat colour. And when it comes down towards the bottom, I'm going to add some white to it as well to create not really a lot of uh, a dusty look to it but to get a, a lower the lower section to be that bit lighter just to add a bit more interest rather than as I said having a perfectly flat color every now and again I'm blowing the pastel away but it's not really pastel a lot of the time I'm blowing these soft tools the sponges on the end of them Anybody that's familiar with pan pastels will know that they wear out on pastel mat really quickly. Now alternatively you can use any of the other tools. So this is like a small sponge, like an oval makeup looking sponge. And I could use that as well. But what I find is I get the smoothest blend with the small um, knife with the rounded edge I used first of all. So you've got a choice. You can use any of the tools. As I said, that knife, that gave me a bit more control over it. And I could use it very softly and lightly with my circular strokes and create exactly the look that I wanted. Now I'm coming down into the, the mane. You can see the tips of the mane. So I'm bringing that colour down to the edge, then I'll reapply some more colour to the tool and then bring it down a bit further because I know I need to bring um, the, the little edges, the tips of the mane up into this blue. You see, so it's not really smudging a lot and dirty and much at all, but I'm reapplying or mixing new colour quite frequently. You see, and just pushing it into the edge there. A little bit more blue, touch of turquoise, more of the very light blue, almost white, and then back in again. So pan pastels, I think, is the easiest way to apply a background. I wanted some of the brown of the paper to show through just slightly it warms up the blue I think it gives a bit more interest again to the look it looks almost as if it could be some slight haze or slight dust in the air of a blue sky if I wanted to be it to be a perfectly flat absolutely opaque blue I would probably have used pastel sticks soft sticks instead so it depends on the effect that you want. But you can see how quickly I can mix with the pan pastels. And that's all real time that you're seeing. And I can go nice and carefully right up to the edge with no problem at all. A little bit of blue, so it's really quick to mix. You see, and I'm blending those colors together now to create a seamless edge to get rid of the edge and make it seamless 
and they'll all look a lot neater when I bring all the fine hairs of the mane up into that blue section. Now as I'm working on a drawing board on an angle, I flipped my drawing, which is what I could have done at the start to stop any uh, dust, although there's not much dust at all, any potential dust falling down onto the surface of the zebra. Nothing happened on the top, but I'm just showing you an, an option. You can just move your drawing around to suit you. See, it's easier for me to see the edges this way. And any little bits of dust or any little bits of the sponge on the end of the tool, I'll just fall down towards my legs and not uh, go onto the, the surface at all. Now here's a, another small tool you can get from Pan Pastels. If you need even more control to get right up by the edges, then you can use one of these. Mix it just the same way. You see, so that gives you a bit more control again. So that's great if you want either to get to the edge or to do fine details with pans. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon. And now I've done that section because I've got a magnetic board, I can just swivel it around and see. So I can work on the front part now and once again I won't get any problems with uh, dust or anything going over the drawing that I've already done. Okay, so it's a larger area so I'm going back to that knife tool and creating that lovely soft, soft flat, or relatively flat look that I'm getting with these pan pastels. And the pans go a long, long way. You need a tiny bit of colour. You see very, very little going on there. And it goes a really long way. Now as I come down towards the zebra's mouth and the feet, that's when you're going to see me add more white to it. Or more of the lighter blue. So I'm going to do exactly the same by here, go right up to the edges.
Now as I'm coming down to the bottom here, that's where I'm going to use more, more of that very, very light blue in there. So it's creating a bit of a gradient of colour. Going from the darker blue at the top, it's only very subtle. I can see it a bit more in real life. But uh, as I said, it's just creating that appearance of lightness at the bottom. And then I'll go carefully around the nose and the mouth. Now it'll be important for me to create that lightness and that gradient under the neck, under the leg, so everything looks correct. But you can see how easy it is to mix a colour, you know, that's very simple like this. I don't have to go make you know, a pile of it up because I won't be able to match the colour. That won't be a problem at all. And you can see I'm leaving a bit of a misty look to it. I don't need it to be all perfectly flat in colour. And once again I flipped it around. You can see how beneficial those magnets are as well. It's much easier than if I was taping taping the drawing down having to pull tape off all the time. I can just slide the magnets up onto the edges and reposition it all very simply. So I'm just going carefully up to the mouth and I can refine those edges again with my pencil work if I if I need to which I probably will. We're going to have whiskers coming onto the bottom of the chin anyway, so all those areas obviously have to go on after I've done this, this background colour. Now I need a bit more control again, so I'm going to use that small tool. Just mix up that similar colour. It just gives me that bit more control over it. Then I can use the larger tool to blend any harder edges out, blend them out together. Now I didn't do the background first because as you can see I didn't want to contaminate something that's going to be this light in tone. But if you're very careful with your work, you could have put the background in much sooner.
Okay, so that's a nice simple background to do. I'm just putting some white onto the bottom, creating that little effect of mist, dust, anything like that, you see. Just making it, I think, a bit more interesting at the bottom rather than a flat color. I'm just going really lightly over what I've already put on there using that soft tool. And that's the background pretty much done. Now all I need to do is get some really fine hairs coming out into the blue. You see a lovely sharp point now on my pencils. I don't want to go pushing hard and create really thick dark lines. Yeah, so you can see every now and again I twirl a pencil around that's keeping it sharp. I've got it at a nice steep angle as well. I've got my glassine paper there resting my hand on. I've got my magnet holding it in place so it's not slipping and sliding and smudging everything underneath. And I'm just being really careful to build up the colours and the tones. You can see it goes nice and easy on top of the pan pastel. And if you wanted an even thinner, more delicate line here and there but not doing all of it, you could use a coloured pencil for this as well. I'm getting nice thin lines at the moment using just my pastel pencils. Now I also need to make sure I'm not going to do a really straight line across where all these hairs are perfectly level and in unison. There's quite a lot of straggler hairs, some are longer than others, some are darker. I'll be bringing the whites into it as well. So don't go on autopilot and just put lots of lines that look exactly the same next to each other. 